All right, guys, my name is Dr. Charnel Wolverton Sihan with Swift Fire International True TV. Super excited tonight because we are hosting a very fun topic, especially in this time and season. We're talking about thriving and creating and manifesting positivity in a very shifting and changing world. And I have really cool guests here. Uh, that um, some of you may be very familiar with. Um, I've had all of them on my show before in the past, and I thought it would be cool to bring everybody together and have a little discussion on and get everyone's perspective on, like, what are you guys doing in this time and season and maybe help have a conversation about some of this and just trying and remembering positivity in this shifting world. So, first of all, I'm just going to go around with everybody and um, have you guys share a little bit about your background, just for anybody who may be not familiar with your work in this audience tonight. And also for those of you who are watching, I would love for you to take just a couple minutes, please, to share and do your due diligence. And I want to hear where you are from, what city, what state, what country. I just like to get a little idea of who you are and where you're coming from, too, so we kind of know who we're talking to. So I'm going to start with Dr. Brooks, who a uh, great manifester and friend. Um, go for it. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I'm, a I'm a professional, professional engineer and scientist. I've been working uh, exclusively with the Fortune 500 for almost 28 years. Uh, I solve problems. So I also am an author and a, a, a speaker. I go around the country and around the world, actually, and speak on energy and resonance and uh, also space exploration and all kinds of scientific innovations with respect to energy and the use of energy. So I am originally from California, but I now live in just outside of North uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So I'm an, the author of 11 books. 12 is in the oven, uh, seven bestsellers. And uh, I, I, I do what I can do to raise the vibration of Earth. Mm -hmm. And you do a great job. Thank you. All right, John, I'm super excited to have you back. Yay. Thanks. It's great to be here. I'm John Vivanco. I've, um, I've been in the remote viewing arena for about 25 years now. I uh, was trained after it was declassified, never in the military, but ran a think tank that was connected to contracting with intelligence, as well as counter terror with the FBI and um, did a lot of work with uh, uh, business corporations on a very high level for future technologies and you know issues that businesses face until the business was shut down um, by a well we won't go into that it was shut down uh, purposefully shut down and and I shifted at that point into um, still running teams of remote viewers but going into really just pushing to to train people in this because remote viewing is not what people think it is it's not the side effect is getting information, but there's a deeper effect that occurs with people that is way outside of the information part. And it goes into, uh, it leads people into a deeper spiritual practice. So I think the potential of that is, is huge. And so that's why I do what I do now in television, teaching, training, and training, and training really to kind of get that 100th monkey set up. Yes, and you've written a book too. Um, yeah, I've got guys, a book. Can you show your book so I can, so everyone can maybe go grab it? I know. Yeah, awesome. Very cool. Yes, awesome. Thank you. And my dog is in the background. Laura, tell us. I, you know, your dear friend, and we do it together. Uh, for the very maybe one person that's never connected with you, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, my name is Laura Eisenhower, and <clears throat> I've been a, a speaker, international speaker for the last decade or so. Um, I'm in the middle of writing some books, so those books will be out soon, so I can soon call myself an author. Um, I like to use the term global alchemist, and it kind of fits the theme for the day of this interview of like turning the lead of this human experience into gold um, and just really embracing transformation cycles instead of getting caught in the ruts or in fear patterns, um, you know, we can actually transform and actually create alchemy. 
Um, I'm a medical and intuitive astrologer, uh, and I've been a researcher pretty much all throughout my life. And I focus on subjects like exopolitics, health, metaphysics, galactic history, um, disclosure related topics, uh, and things related to ascension, um, DNA, uh, our divine blueprint, and you know, ET races, and uh, just really uh, about um, hoping to inspire people into unity consciousness and bring us back to the zero point unified field um, to really just flow in the energetics of what's available and to increase our circulation with spirit realms and higher dimensions so that we can begin to anchor and ground these energies here so that we can see the world um, shift for the better. And that's pretty much it. I mean, hardly anything. <laughs> Not just everything. Yes. And for those of you unfamiliar with me, I am a naturopathic doctor and also a conference speaker. I've spoken in 44 countries, written five books now. And um, my latest is actually the science of miracles, which really does touch a lot about the subject that we're talking about tonight, but um, teach a lot of classes, do biofeedback and consultations and what have you. But what I really love is when we can address a lot of people at once, because when we can do this, like what we're doing here tonight, um, you know, we can reach a lot more people than just, you know, one-on-one -on -one consultations. And that's what I love about just the synergy of what we're doing here as a collective and uh, hopefully just activating some people who may catch the show and may get an answer or some clarity in the situation. Now, for me, uh, Laura and I have talked about this for weeks. And, you know, um, what I'm getting, a lot of feedback where people, people are feeling stuck. My dogs are barking, sorry. People are feeling stuck right now. We're just in such a weird place. And, well, I guess everything is perception. And, you know, what are some tips that you guys have in the middle of this to create our own positivity no matter what is going on externally and maybe even shift the timeline as a collective um, along the way. I'm going to start with Dr. Brooks. Well, the thing to remember is that we each are an individual soul address. So we, as a race, as a, uh, a mortal race here on this planet, we make up a collection of consciousnesses on this planet. And we have a symbiotic relationship with the planet itself, with Earth itself. What we have to pay attention to is all of this is an interaction of energy. And these are ancient principles. They go back to the beginning of the universe. And darkness knows these principles as well as light does. And they use these principles every single day to get us to think about their agenda. And as we think about their agenda, we add our soul energy to their agenda, which creates a huge resonation. It makes it almost seem unstoppable. <laughs> what we really have to do is we have to kind of shake that off and realize that we're sovereign beings and we can generate our own energy and better yet, we can even listen for a higher vibration and we can associate ourselves with that. And when we do, we break away from the drone that we hear all day long on the radio and the TV. And, you know, everybody's every news organization is pounding the same words into us over and over. Turn all that off and join the energy of mankind. And when you do, you will find an amazing love pulse because it's out there. Every time we go to a conference, there's no news playing, there's no radio playing, it's just us. And when we come together, we create such a light energy, it cannot be denied. It changes people who go to these conferences. But more importantly, and I think Laura will agree with me, it changes the earth because we create light signatures that begin to resonate with the planet itself. And that's how we change everything. Awesome. I love it. Yes. And I'm sure John, with your remote viewing and seeing, you know, outside of your little room and just working with so many people that may be, you know, um, on a, an actual task, to see some of the darker things? Like, how do you do this and focus on the light at the same time? 
Okay, so I mean, for one thing, it's it's really difficult for um, us to always go into that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, we get attacked, you know, we get attacked oh, yeah. big time. And it's, you, you have to, it's remote viewing to me is like learning how to walk through dark back alleys because, you know, you inevitably end up in one of those back alleys and you figure out how to protect yourself. But, you know, outside of that, I mean, it just outside of that stuff, it's just, I like to stay away from it these days and focus. Like when I do training, if I'm going to task people on strange stuff, I'm going to be tasking them on things that are high vibrational, things that they can have an experience with that changes their perception of reality. But the other thing too, you know, in it, it, what Dr. Brooks was talking about, it's like, think about like where we are. Like we spend most of our time in these thought forms, this house, everything around all of you are created with a thought form the form thought form from man and and we continually live continually live in this drama this circulating drama in our heads whether it's the television or just being in this stuff one thing to do is to get out of it go into nature when you go into nature there's no thought form these things will keep you locked in to a certain degree into some type of human cycling of drama. And so it's really important to take your shoes off, go into the woods and just feel the earth and connect in that way because that's gonna erase a lot of this stuff and get you back to this grounded perspective um, on moving forward in a positive way. Oh, you're good. Sorry, that is just amazing. That's so good. And that's one of my big, big things of cheering on people coming to nature, recoding, you know, just thinking, um, participating in the code of light and nature outside and um, the sacred geometry of it too. It just literally changes you and it changes your hormones. It literally changes your physiology just by being on the beach or putting your feet in the ground or just being among you know, amongst the trees, God's living room. So yeah, I love that answer. That's great. What about you, Laura? Yeah, well, I absolutely agree. The nature thing is really, really important. And I, and I just feel like we have to keep our creative energy engaged in a really positive way because there's so much trying to hook into us and infect our creativity with, uh, you know, fear, propaganda stuff that most of us avoid. And we know what that's all about and we can see through it. But uh, I just think there, there can just be an overload of information sometimes. And even if a person uh, is an awakened individual, um, it can sometimes, you know, be too much. So nature, absolutely. Um, that's everything for me, animals and nature. Um, it puts me in the now, it puts me in the moment. Um, I start to feel like myself again. I start to feel, you know, stronger and, you know, just moving the body and, and yeah, keeping the creative energy engaged in goals and visions and dreams so that uh, <clears throat> I know that I'm not stagnating or, or, or maybe holding on to something that's um, kind of shutting me down. And I think it's been a bit of a roller coaster for everybody. Uh, you know, those tough days, kind of hard to get out of bed, so much to process, the madness of it all. It's just like, are you freaking kidding me? I mean, we've been warning people about NWO for so many years. It's another thing to wake up to it every day and to see how people are responding our, and friends and family because it really does show where a person's at and not coming from a place of, oh, I have all the answers or I'm better than you. Um, it's just is interesting seeing how everybody's responding to this stuff. And yeah, just kind of keeping my attention on the bigger picture um, and that we are going through a major transformation cycle as a planet. Um, and so people are facing fears of death, which is a part of the transformation process, um, is to move through those kind of uh, difficult passages to get to the other side so that we can gain more strength. Um, and it's just very important that we stand our ground no matter what, we don't have to compromise for anything. Um, and just staying in alignment with truth and uh, not, falling into um, just uh, any compromise or compliancy, uh, even if it means you have to leave a job or, or a relationship or move, um, that truth wins at all costs. And I think that's a really important thing is that people realize there are other options 
um, and you don't have to answer to the system and that we can all begin to really look at each other and build community. And so that's what I'm really focused on is how can we build community? People feeling isolated or confused about things. Um, you know, how can we become better resources for each other so we can help people transition out of uh, the things that they might not feel like they're easily able to leave and also just to, to make conversation uh, and make connections. Realizing we don't, we can starve all of that. We don't need it. We've got each other. We've got the earth. We've got spirit. And um, if we can keep our attention on that, uh, th this is a really powerful and amazing time. <laughs> We're in an ascension window period. And it's like they, they, they've managed to put it all in reversal. And, uh, and, and we simply just need to really get a true sense of what the uh, real world is, the, the organic reality, the, the true reality, not this illusion uh of falsity and lies and deception so that's good yes and you know for for those of you who've watched you know i think everybody we have like family members we have you know people that we have been friends with and there's been some divisions at some times and different things that have cupped up but just because of the topics at hand that are really kind of prevalent in our day right now um, have you guys had family member situations or weird? Yeah, no, don't don't give me a glass of wine at Thanksgiving. Just don't do it. <laughs> don't. Oh, you're the, you're the one. one. <laughs> you know what I see, uh, and I wrote I wrote a trilogy on this called the Birth Trilogy. Is that Earth? This symbiotic relationship that humans have with Earth. We're really the only beings that we know of that can perceive time. Uh, if, you, if you don't believe me, uh, 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 Dr. Charnel, try to teach your dogs about tomorrow. They just, they're not going to get it. We can access time. We can access the future and the past. And we kind of consciously float through that. And in doing that, in perceiving that and adding our energy to that, we resonate with the earth. And earth kind of acts like a living thing it 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 tends towards stasis it repels toxins it brings forth spontaneous life it is a living thing for all intents and purposes and it has its own consciousness and the scriptures say that when the more part of man chooses wickedness the earth has this like allergic reaction it spanks mankind with a tornado or a hurricane or an earthquake or a volcano right back down to tribes and they start all over again but now there are about eight billion of us alive on the earth that's a huge consciousness signal and about half of us are wicked and half of us are let's for all intents and purposes call it righteous and Earth doesn't know what to do, doesn't know whether to destroy us or release all its bounty to us. And so I feel like the Earth is splitting in two. It's dividing. And it was prophesied, the grand division. And what happens is the people that are gravitating toward the light or the higher vibration, Earth, they're no longer perceiving the people that are in the dark or the lower vibrational Earth. And that's what we're seeing happen, even to the family. We're seeing families split apart, marriages split apart, lifelong friendships split apart just because of this vibrational frequency. So don't be afraid. All of this is part of what's going on. Nice. What about you besides the wine situation, John? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not good when I turn on. Um, because, you know, a lot of people around me and my family, um, except for a couple of them, are very closed off uh, to most things and, and believe in the constructed reality for them. Um, so what was the question? What was the question again? Like, you're muted again. Yeah, you're muted. Yes. Just, just how you handle those situations when there is, you know, right in your family, in your own house or, you know, close friends, how do you deal with that? You know, it, it's, I've been, uh, I've been doing this for so long and, and my, my family life, I'm far away from family. So I don't really have that um, connection so much anymore. Um, and the people that I interact with are, well, they're all people like you now, 
So it is like Dr. Brooks was saying, is it's like this, this other half seems to have disappeared, right? So I seem to live in a different bubble of reality than most people. And I'm, I, well, since the election, I haven't even turned on the news. I haven't looked at anything, nothing at all, zero. And it's really turned me into, I don't know, less cortisone person maybe, or cortisol, you know, the, the running Hot through the system when you watch this. Yeah, so, so in, I'm, I'm happy with that at the moment. I'm good with it. And then going and speaking at conferences and doing these shows, it's like, I mean, of course we're, we're, we're on this path where we're sort of speaking to the initiated in a sense. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where that's going to go. Ultimately don't know where that's going to go. Um, well, then they shut them all down. They, they said, okay, no more conferences, right? No more conferences. And it's hard, you know, to get the love to come through the camera. It's much easier face to face because you get that, that kind of glial resonance, one person to another. And uh, I mean, gosh, the love is so powerful at these events. It's, it's impossible to resist it. And uh, it's so pure. You know, there's no jealousy. There's no envy. It's just amazing. And they shut all that down. The, the made for TV virus said no more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get it back, but you know, it's okay if we don't, because there is a huge transition that we have to go to go through. Um, and that has to do with this internal process that everybody's going to have to go through. It's like tribulations, you know, um, where, where the stuff that happens in here is not actually reality. And we have to begin, in my opinion, to move to this aspect of ourselves that is without words, because that's the place where true healing occurs. It doesn't occur with a thought process, it doesn't occur with logic. It happens when you go and realize that this is what causes the suffering. Yeah. And if there's all sorts of suffering going on around you, it's okay because all this suffering, it arises and it falls, it arises and it falls. You're just not getting caught in it because you found a place in yourself where there's just joy in being. Yes. Instead of doing or thinking or trying, right. just being present in the now. And yeah, that connection to what's happening now and who you're with. Because even when they did open everything up, I would go to restaurants and you would think that people would be like so happy just to be with other people. And I would see like a whole family and everyone was individual on their phone, like food in front. I didn't like looking at the people that they may have even seen in forever long, you know? So it's like, there's that aspect too. It's like, I just think we get so, I know I get stuck in my phone sometimes or in computers or social media or whatever. I noticed you, you're not even on social media anymore, John. Like, it's not been like a woohoo, yay. Yeah, I don't, I don't do it. I, it's, it's, I, I have YouTube, but I haven't put a lot on YouTube and I have Edge of Wonder series that I, I was working on. I think I've been pretty much blacklisted from Hollywood at this point. Um, <laughs> and so I don't do any more television stuff. Um, so things have been like scaling back and changing gears and going in different directions. And I'm, I'm all, you know, I'm just going with whatever it is. So sure. social media is, is basically one big, huge operation. And I like to stay away from it as much as I can. Yeah, I do. I do live social media. Like if I'm in a restaurant, I go to the bathroom, you know, whatever, wash my hands, come out. I'll just stop by a random table and say, so how was everything? And they'll go, oh, it was great, great, yeah. good, good, I'm glad. Thanks so much that's, for coming. And then go sit down at my table. And I think you're the manager. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Well, um, yeah, and look, people, you guys who are watching, if you have any questions too, please feel free to plug in your questions here and we can get them answered, but Laura, Tell us about how are you handling all of this with your family and what's going on with you guys? Well, once decisions are made, there's really nothing that a person can do, you know, post, you know what, <laughs> like after the fact, it's like, there's no, um, it, it, it does no good to make a person feel bad about their choices. So I just, um, I'm very supportive and loving. It's like, okay, cool. You know, you, this is what you've decided to do. And 
and I love and respect you. And, um, but I try and just stay clear of these kind of conversations. Um, if I'm asked a lot of questions about the choices I'm making, I try and just kind of keep it neutral. I almost play kind of dumb, you know, sort of like, oh yeah, you know, I'll look into it. I'm just kind of researching. Yeah. You know, um, and, and, uh, kind of like, I don't really know anything. Um, and I sometimes feel like, yeah, uh, I've, I've said a lot before all this took place, um, in the family anyway. Um, and they kind of know that I go pretty far out of the box. And of course the term conspiracy theorist, which I don't think is a terrible term, but it's just gotten a bad rap. So they already know that I think in that way. And they've already determined that that's not really how they think, but I don't want that to get in our way. I just want um, to enjoy the friends and family that um, is loving for as long as we're all around um, and have a boundary to those that aren't loving and are judgmental and cruel and, um, and just, just stay staying with the love vibe. So with like friends and family, um, yeah, I just I just keep it as high vibe as possible, uh, and I hold a lot of faith and trust that they're going to be okay. I don't like to feed into the fear, um, but yeah, I definitely avoid certain conversations. I'm very much like John. Don't want to give me wine or champagne at a gathering with my family. No, um, it's like I'll just be sitting there by myself talking about Mars, and nobody's like around me, like or I'd be talking, you know. Uh, and I've tried to get a lot of. Uh, answers out of them. So then of course we're going to talk about aliens and ETs and government treaties. And so, yeah, um, I avoid alcohol around family and, uh, yeah, just wanting to keep the love vibe strong. Um, I want to feel into the closeness and the blessing of our connections despite our differences. That sounds good. Yes. Well, I'm curious. Um, yeah, I've had those, I've had those conversations about Mars to myself and the family that have ruined Thanksgiving in the past. Yeah. Uh, I have to sit at the kitty table. Like, uh, anyway. I love at the kids' table. It's the best. It's way more fun. Oh, yeah. They're way more Absolutely. honest. They're way more honest and authentic. Yes. Well, and speaking of Mars and or ETs, where does that fit in with what's happening now and how do we, can we orchestrate through all of that? And you no, know, are they here to help? Are they here to hurt? Like what's, what do you guys, what's your take on it? Can we start in alphabetical order? I don't know. Uh, sure. Dr. Brooks. Uh, you know, I'm a scientist, so I don't really believe in anything. I have to have proof. I've got to have evidence. And uh, I cannot deny that there are such a thing as UFOs. They're everywhere. I've photographed them. I've seen them. Uh, but one thing, well, two things we can say. One is uh, they're as present as they want to be. And if they wanted to be more present, there's probably not much we could do about it. And the second thing is I think we should all be very grateful that they didn't bring weapons with them. So I don't know who they are or what they are, whether they've been here a lot longer than us or whether they came from someplace else or between dimensions, but I do know they exist. Are they here to help or hurt? Yes. Awesome. And John? Uh, I'll let Laura go. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I think it's just always a mixed bag. There's benevolent um, assistance and then there's... Uh, just service to self um, malevolent type beings that uh, are here and off planet and underground. I mean, um, I just think it's a very mixed bag. I am certain there's colonies on Mars. Um, I was recruited to go to one in 2006. And so, I mean, the whole idea was that they wanted to uh, protect the human genome in the event of catastrophe. That was at least the way they presented it. Uh, the way it was done, though, and the secrecy and the lack of really being able to communicate with everybody and a lot of the research that I was uh, doing helped me to kind of like dig real deep and really get to know the people that were connected and involved. And I'm not saying that they're bad guys. It was kind of a mixed bag of uh, different military, uh, former military, um, you know, scientists, physicists, all a part of this group called the Aviary um, and folks like John Alexander, who's... Uh, connected with um, psychotronic weaponry and um, all sorts of things related to UFO stuff. 
um, you know, this is, is just a, a group of individuals that were very much in the know about these colonies on Mars. So I do feel like there is maybe something positive going on there. Um, but I think it's a very dangerous thing also because a lot of times they present something as being very, very positive to try and talk a person into it. And then once you get there, you realize, wow, okay, this is not what I thought. Um, and so I mean, I think there, there's the galactic slave trade. There's a lot of slaves. Um, there's a lot of battles and stuff going on. And Elena talks a lot and other people talk a lot about what's currently going on on Mars. And I'm not quite sure myself, but um, I mean, I think we're going to go to the other planets. I, I, I feel like we're going to be able to come and go from the physical um, as we please. I feel like we're shifting from carbon based to crystalline and we're going to advance our human vessel so that we can almost be like a, a, a consciousness craft and uh, and we'll explore these, you know, places. And I do feel like they have different vibrations. Like there's higher earth energies. There's ascension energies on the planet that take us into a higher earth. And I feel like all the different planetary bodies have different octaves and levels and different dimensional realities. Um, and that's why that's also a mixed bag. So I feel like who we are and what we embody and what our frequency is has a lot to do with what we're interacting with um, outside of ourselves. Uh, and um, hopefully it, it will maintain connections with those that are more benevolent. And any group that's benevolent, I feel, you know, aren't here to save us or do it for us, but they're here to help support the process um, cause eventually, you know, when we switch on this dormant DNA, we're going to understand that we're these higher dimensional benevolent beings and we're meeting, uh, a greater galactic heritage and family out there. So we got to, you know, really work on ourselves and, you know, kind of just see what that draws to us. And I think very soon we're going to just have more open conversations about the realities of what have been, you know, has been going on that's been held in secrecy for so long. Yeah, totally. I agree. I mean, it's like if if aliens appeared on a mass level, most people would treat them as either some type of enemy or some type of god. Mm -hmm. And really, that's I think that the especially if you get a higher vibrational type situation coming in, and I think that's a situation that's really dangerous. Has happened in the past, and. And I think that is probably a part of the reason why any of these beings would be holding back, at least coming from a higher dimensional um, perspective, uh, because it's time for humans to kind of grow up to it all, to, to all the information's out there. I mean, okay, all of the disclosure that's happening now is absolutely ridiculous because, I mean, researching this stuff 20, 30 years ago myself, and coming to the conclusion that there's a phenomena occurring and the government's been interested in know what the phenomena is. So right now, oh, you know, this is happening and whoa, what, what is it? We better figure this out, right? It's just, it's ridiculous. So it's, it's for a social engineering purpose. We don't know what yet. It hasn't risen to the surface, but I'm sure it will. And it, it's probably got something to do with um, alien takeover of the planet, maybe, right? Get people back into fear because this place is, controlled by fear that's really what it comes down to and um as far as you know a, I, you know a lot of like what we run into with remote viewing seems to be um we've got a lot of extra dimensional um but we also have this sort of like um, physical alien thing as well that transits from like a third dimension into a fourth dimension and and a lot of the technology and stuff that we see through remote, remote viewing is are, are them being able to m manipulate space time to move from wherever they are to come here as opposed to just flying here, right? And Mars, I mean, it's one of those places that, you know, we, we have remote viewed specific things. And remote viewing, you always need to have a known in order to task from. We don't do these open searches because that can lend uh, to some type of fantasies that go on with remote viewing. So we always want a known, do we have a photograph? Do we have an experience of someone, et cetera, et cetera. And so when we look at some anomalous photographs of Mars and we remote view those locations, on a couple of those locations, we've gotten, like when remote viewers go into them, we get the viewers hear alarm bells. Like they hear like, like you've stepped into a zone and they, could, they have technology to sense a remote viewer or a psychic coming in. 
that wow. it sounds the alarms. And then the viewers get in, get stuck in this kind of what we call a viewer trap, where they're sort of spinning and turning in these fractals while they're trying to get information that never actually goes anywhere. So it's the same with the moon too. Um, whether you're talking about Mars or the moon, it's, it's, it's the, you've got these bases that are set up by these ones that have been really intent on being involved to a certain capacity in human culture mm -hmm. um, and taking from humans. I mean, also think about the earth. The earth is a great resource. A lot of things here that can be used as beings travel through the universe, whatever. But a lot of them that are fully stationary here on the third dimensional level are not ones that you exactly would want to have as friends. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I get that. I can see that. Because it's clear that, that science has made leaps that they sh didn't intuit. It wasn't one thing led to another. They were handed something whole and complete, and then they tried to reverse engineer it. It's kind of like when, when the Egyptians walked into the Nile River Valley and they saw the three pyramids uh, sitting there on pristine white. No one around. Who built them? They don't know. But we assume the Egyptians built them. They don't have a clue what they were right. for. Yeah, exactly. So they're handed this whole technology and then said, here, reverse engineer this. Mm -hmm. They don't even know how it works. So what do they do? They spin off the first weapon they can find. Yeah. And that, that's what we're dealing with. And you can see it in the science. You know, I've been around JPL since I was in high school. Off and on, I'm associated with uh, people that live their lives there. And they made jumps, big jumps in technology that came from somewhere. It right. didn't come from somebody's dreams. It didn't well, come from someone's lab notebook. Yeah, well, and talking about that, you mentioned time and you mentioned jumps. And, you know, there's different movies you know because they have to tell you that are out there that talk about some of these like different dimensions or or um diff maybe multiple earths happening simultaneously or different timelines that are going on and I don't you find it strange that matthew mcconaughey was in all of those movies <laughs> wow interesting well i mean uh, there I don't know if you guys have seen Man in the High Castle, but he also did uh, Blade Runner and a few others. But I saw an interview with him that was, you know, I didn't know that the guy, I don't know if he's still alive, the guy who did all this stuff, but he swears that he was writing these movies based out of living in these other realities and seeing what was going on and then bringing it to the surface and, and this timeline for us to see. So, you know, how much can we do as individuals and or collective to jump timelines or create a new way for the new earth architects that we are, you know, and we can do a um, lot, be responsible, you know, responsible and doing our individual work and self-development. Like, how does that work? as far as um, as what you guys see, Brooks? Well, when you sit down and write a book, you know, you reach your hand out there in the maelstrom. And some people have really good observational powers and record-keeping powers. They can come back with a clear idea. Others, they get mixed up by that. And it shows in their music and their art and their writing. And it's all disjointed because they, they can't make a clear observation because it is, it is fifth dimensional. It's all times at one time. And it's difficult to pull a coherent thought out of it. And, uh, and that, that's what wears artists out. It becomes more real than they are. And so that, I guess that's where a scientist has an advantage. I can go in and I can delineate you know, what I want. But I have to tell you, I am an observer. When I go there, I'm an observer. And when I'm writing, it's like I can see it. I'm just in the room recording the conversations. And that's you know that's why people call it the birth journey because it just it just takes you. Hmm. What about you, John or Laura? Oh, it's Philip Dick. Thank you, Matt. That's the guy who wrote who I was referring to. Go ahead, John. 
Ernest the Beat. Yeah, Philip K. Dick. He's he's incredible. I mean, he was he was definitely um, pulling from another realm, but it was like a it was like an alternative timeline that seemed to cross in and out. I mean, for instance, you know, Minority Report was all about remote viewing, um, and and what's interesting is that that method that they use in that movie. Um, with the precogs in the tank, um, we use that. We don't have tanks, but we use multiple remote viewers at once, just like they were doing it along with a monitor. So it's really interesting, you know, Philip K. Dick and, and, and what he did. Some of his work is some of the best work I've ever read. I uh, really enjoy him. But yeah, what was the question again? Yeah, like how much of a, what, how much of self-development individually actually is uh, purposeful for shifting the timeline to something different? Oh or yeah, something? well, timelines. Um, I feel that that manifestation is literally it's like positivity in manifestation, and I think that a lot of people out there that are watching this probably understand the whole manifestation magnetic side, and I think that that. A lot of people take it from the standpoint of, I want to manifest riches for me. Mm -hmm. I want to manifest like material objects, but it's, it's that, it's that want that need where you can focus on a spiritual outcome or something better in your life, um, where you go into just extreme positivity and joy and focus on moving into another timeline or moving into just a more aligned place with yourself. I think that when people move into more aligned place with themselves, it's like this expanding fractal throughout the timelines that they are on that can actually heal all of it. So timeline or not, it's like, where are you in the moment? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and how do you just create this moment where you are pushing yourself outside of your thinking mind and into a place of, of joy within you, because that, that's the thing that's going to fractal out and cause shifts and changes throughout all of them. That's good, I love it. Yeah, um, well, we're co-creating our reality in a lot of ways, of course, and to me, we're in a relationship with everything, and timelines are no different. We're uh, in a relationship you know, to the timeline that we're on. And so in a relationship you invest and you also receive, um, there's kind of a give and take going on and a, sort of a way to communicate. Um, so if you're very devoted, if you're very grounded, if you're very consistent and very anchored um, in your truth frequency and you're interacting with life from that uh, vibration, um, to me that really solidifies the timeline. Um, so if a person's sovereign and they're on that path, they're going to be on a, a timeline that's going to reflect back what that really means. A person that's complying and obedient, who's got their creative channels um, hooked into to the point where they're really not in a relationship with the self. They're in a relationship with uh, sort of a intermediary or like a, a, a like or a group of uh, humans that um, sort of act as their creative power. And so their creative power is no longer something that they hold for themselves on a sovereign level. They're doing what they're told. They're doing um they're, they're answering to an outer authority. And so they're going down the trajectory of an artificial timeline that's been generated, engineered, and created that they're in a relationship with. They might trust it. They might think it's great. They might feel safe in it, but it's definitely a different path than a person that's walking uh, in spiritual alignment, sovereignty, and truth. And it doesn't mean, you know, it's all black and white. I, I, I feel there's... Uh, <clears throat> going to be a lot of individuals that are still in the awakening process and it's not you know so cut and dry that um there might be an artificial element to it an organic element to it kind of um intermingling with each other until uh they're ready to kind of split off and then i see the timelines having a bit of a bridge and connecting points until they really phase out and we don't see it so much anymore and people have either transitioned moved on or we're just not in touch with them and we just don't interact or see them but I think that's going to be a bit as long as like, you know, there's love and they're trying to create this sort of segregation and division and separation. Um, but we don't have to do it, it within that bubble and see it, in, it through the lens of conquer and divide or segregation. And um, we could just, you know, 
accept uh, their choices and empower our own and um, stay very engaged in the creative process so that, um, you know, like, you know, Brooke said, I mean, we're, we're a replica of the planetary grid network and the multidimensional cosmos. Um, and so by nature, uh, there's this incredible, you know, relationship. Our greater abilities, you know, getting switched on enables us to um, really, you know, advance ourselves in amazing ways. And to me, um, you know, that inner discovery manifests um, on the outside uh, an advancing world if we're advancing ourselves. So if we're advancing ourselves from the inside out, we're going to be moving in an advanced direction as far as the timeline's concerned into higher earth energies. The more we give that power away and we have somebody else run the creative show for us, um, the more of a transhumanism kind of world because it's supplementing our spiritual growth and our ability to switch on the things that are dormant. And it's actually kind of replacing that initiation with, um, you know, kind of uh, that kind of being the answer. And it's not all negative necessarily. I, I, I mean, technology has a very positive place. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I feel it's the consistency in what we invest in and it's a relationship that we nurture and, uh, and that we can just make healthy and, and experience like authentic, true love with creation instead of uh, where we've been with uh, just the matrix and um, these abusive relationship patternings with that matrix energy, whether it's addiction, whether it's materialism that's out of hand, um, or just being so locked in the personality matrix that you're not living on a deep level or finding soul family or soul mates, which is very superficial. So yeah, um, I just see us generating it from the inside out. And if we choose to advance ourselves and be on that path, we're going to be moving into advanced higher earth energies. You know, it's really interesting actually is you know, talking about timelines every once in a while when we're running projects on, um, photographs or videos that people have taken, um, we see like UFO type phenomena, like especially related to something that looks like a black cube that flies around. We see when we remote view this stuff, data comes back that is relating this cube type craft to removing sections or manipulating sections of timelines or reeling things back and then overlaying another timeline. And um. And on top of that, we also see that there are other beings, dimensional beings who are responsible for uh, fixing the broken strands of timelines. So it's like you've got, you almost have this timeline war going on, especially when we dig in with remote viewing. It's like, you know, it's unexpected, some of this stuff that comes up in the data. And it does appear to me that there are other beings, darker beings who are trying to shift and manipulate based on some crazy exotic technology to create timelines that they want to have exist. Well, and to keep their narrative, they can use us, the creators, because we are the ones with the heart versus, you know, off planet. A lot of them are just completely not connected to that creative power. And so they're using our abilities by getting us to try to steer us to whatever narrative that they have, whether it's fear or hate or division or what have you. So they don't even have to create anything, but they can just use us to create their own yeah. outcome that they've wanted the whole time, but that they have that law where, you know, they can't force anything. You know, they don't care about the law. Yeah, there, there, there's, there has to be consent. So if we're just willingly focus on what they put out. I mean, that's, that's all within the law of us to create that. Right. You know so what I find interesting though, they're, they're extremely sneaky and manipulative. Um, and I know that a lot of abductees have this idea of, well, okay, they've been abducted for, you know, a large portion of their life and abused to a huge degree. And they eventually come to the point of saying, well, I, I believe that I accepted this on a subconscious level, my higher self accepted it, so now it's all okay. But where does that thought implant come from? Is it something that was given to them later on so that it's sort of this like um, backfill? You know what I mean? That's a good I question. You know, they're sneaky, they're sneaky. That is a really good question. Yeah. Um, I don't. And then they get a hold of people that are wired like me and Laura 
and they go, whoa, <laughs> hands off of that one. Uh, Can't manipulate that timeline. That would hurt. <laughs> well, I, I think what I'm hearing, and I know Laura's got to jump off here in a second. I think what I, I'm hearing the most as far as a collective on this group tonight is, you know, somehow maintaining sovereignty in the middle of what's happening. And, That's tough. Um, and self-development. And, and I really do think that, you know, regardless of being called a conspiracy theorist or whatever, it's just hilarious because it's really just a spoiler alert. Everything's coming out. That's the, the truth. Anyway, it just takes time. You know, that's the difference. And, you know, it's it's not like any of us want to be right. It just happens that we are. <laughs> it's like, and a lot of people watching too. And um, self-development de in the middle, you know, mindset. Yeah. Um, you know, and a lot of people have to face the fact that not only is that going to happen, but they may find themselves living alone. Wow. Yeah. You know, a lot of people will will give up their sovereignty just for the free rent. You know, they'll 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 just do that, and they don't. They're not living. They're not yeah. alive when they're doing that. You yeah. might find yourself living alone, but you know what you're going to do very soon? You're going to meet someone else that's living alone yeah there's been a lot of people i see in this uh, six months a year that we found each other. Um, sure. there's new connections you know and so there's this letting go and then there's new beginnings you know people are i think more aware of what they're putting in their bodies what they're eating what they're drinking who sure. they're spending time with you know and for me mentally you know it's a moment to moment to moment things sometimes you know sometimes That's all you should be having are moments one after the other yeah what do you what do you think john hey yeah, Chanel. Think... oh yes what is that she got me this mug oh that's awesome yes um, um new people meeting new people and finding each other and staying sane <laughs> you know yeah you know i i um i'm not like the rest of the people out there, um, I, 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 I might be part alien in that um, I, I don't have a lot of human contact um, in general, even before COVID. So it's hard for me to say. I mean, you know, I mean, I still wear my mask to now protect me from the vaccinated. So I'm not going to meet anybody. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll just say real quick. So yeah, any final off. words, Laura? I know you guys, I got to get off. I'll let her go first and we'll go um, around. And the question was uh, just self-development, mental oh, yeah. healing, responsibility. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I think, I mean, we're creative beings. We're constantly creating. Are we creating from a vibration of fear? Or are we creating from a higher vibration of like love and wisdom? And it takes constant self-reflection and checking oneself and assessing where one's at to keep up the spiritual hygiene and maintenance because we have to maintain um it's not like you you arrive and then it, it, you just end up staying so it's, it's 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 like a daily practice it's like getting exercise we clean our kitchens we clean our bathroom we have to clear our mental bodies and our emotional bodies and our spiritual energies and so the maintenance part um is huge because as long as we're doing that we make room for the best parts of ourselves um, to really be occupying our physical vessel uh, and we're in our center and we're balanced and we're grounded and our ability to even create miracles, which you've written a book about, um, is that much easier because we're not loaded up with a bunch of stuff and, and low density energy and, and, and things that like we might not realize we're trying to constantly medicate or, or, or contend with. So um, I'm doing my best. I wouldn't say I'm like, you know, I, I wouldn't follow my example, uh, especially in this last week, um, but I do my best. I do my best to maintain um, balance and clarity and be as you know, pure as I can as far as what I eat and put in my body and as honest as I possibly can with the process so that people really understand where I'm at and I don't put on facades and I'm not fake, you know? It's like, I just, I'm just, all I can do is be myself and hold myself accountable to where I need to correct and do better. And also um, just keep myself uh, engaged in exciting things. Um, but I get rest when I need it. 
I'm learning how to do that and like really shut everything down. If I need to take a day off and not do anything, I give myself um, that permission and I realize how important it is. And I just love really living on my own terms and being as helpful as I possibly can when I'm able to. And yeah, I, I want to, you know, paint more. I mean, there's so much more I, I could be doing, of course, but um, I really feel like I'm on the other side of major mourning and, and just grief about the choices people are making, my concerns about those choices. I don't feel so um, like in a, in a bad way. I was for a bit, I'm feeling my strength returning. So I'll kind of leave it at that. <laughs> Awesome. And where can people find you? Because I know you got to get going. Um, yes. Link, website. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, my website's cosmicguide.org. I have a new platform called Conscious Vitality. And I keep my website pretty much updated. So just, yeah, check that. Join my telegram. Um, and thanks so much for having me. And it's great to be with you guys. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Well, Brooks and John, if you could share any last words and where people can find you. Uh, sure. The easiest place to find me is brooksagnew.com. Super simple. There's no uh, ones or zeros or anything, just brooksagnew.com. Everything I'm doing, speaking, writing, is podcast is on every Wednesday and Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Uh, we stream on seven different platforms, so you're going to see us somewhere. And, uh, you know, we're, like I said, writing book number 12. Hopefully I'll have it done by Christmas. That's the plan. And uh, we're just uh, staying at it. Of course, I'm still working 70 hours a week, but uh, we'll get it done. And you're getting a little bit of motorcycle riding in there, too. And Absolutely. Some Two-wheel meditation. Seeing that. Uh, we're going to start some sort of thing. I, wind therapy. I'm telling you, like, Jeep, <laughs> uh motorcycles the beach wind boats um there's something to this and it has been and he's what are you gonna do it's like a can and charge dollars an hour it's like no but there's something to do that right john how can we find you how can people connect with you going forward here and any last words of wisdom and sage wisdom that you have well i mean i think that I, it goes back to just getting out of your head and going into nature to balance it all out. Ultimately, that's, I think that's the most important thing. It's the easiest way, you know, nobody's going to sit on a cushion for 10 hours a day. Like I used to do. They're going to not do that. It's too much trouble, too much work. And everybody's got jobs these days. I don't know why, but going into nature will quickly release. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You awesome. can find me, um, at righthemispheric.com and I teach classes. I've got a class coming up in September. Um, I am on YouTube. I haven't put a bunch there um, recently, but I will start up again. And I'm also on edgeofwonder.tv. Uh, you can watch a couple series. Um, uh, remote viewing, uh, it's called Chronicles of a Psychic Spy. Um, and you know, other than that, I stay away from Facebook. I stay away from Instagram. Uh, Telegram for me has been very private, but I'm thinking about creating a more of a <clears throat> umbrella type group to talk about remote viewing and the issues that we're facing um, and using remote viewing to solve them. Awesome. So when I do, it'll be on my website. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys for your time. Um, for those of you watching, you can go to swiftfire.org and find all my resources and get on the newsletter. Please get on the newsletter. That's a biggie just because no matter what's going on or what's happening, at least we can connect and I can tell you where we're going to be next and what have you. But love you guys so much and appreciate your time here tonight and all your work and your missions. And um, just thank you for keeping it positive. Thank you for your portion and helping the frequency of the earth and all you guys watching too. You guys are very positive. Dr. Whip is on here and there's Matthew and Teddy and Raven and Raven Rising's on here and Alina was on here earlier. So we got a lot of people following and super excited about all you guys who are with us here tonight. Candace is with us and even Norway. I love that. And you know, we love you guys and we appreciate you and it takes all of us. And so the more of us that can just stay and help each other feel a little more sane, the better it is, right? And um, love you guys so much. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.